Hello Bloodball fans, this is a bit of a weird one. I'm going to be watching my student's game in the Student Tutor League, my student playing Orcs, and I'm going to give him feedback in the same, at the same time I'm going to do a kind of analytical review of the Orc play. So it won't just benefit my student Blissful Fire, but hopefully it'll benefit you guys as well a little bit. <coughs> of course, always keep in mind that it is easier to see things when you're watching somebody else play or when you're watching things in retrospect, so even though I'm obviously giving ideal situations and looking at what I can see in front of me. Do you remember that he was under the pressure of gaming and Blissful Fire is still quite new to the game, so he may do some strange things at times. Though he's a good coach, so I've got no problem with that. And his opponent, Joe Brandon, same thing. He's one of the students as well, quite new to the game, so let's not be too harsh to him. <clears throat> Though I've played them both, and they're both fine. What else can I say? So I'm going to do it the same as I do with the Tutor League games, basically. I'm going to pause each Orc round and see, say what I can see. I'll try and have a look at potential future turn movements based on what this Fire does as well, just so we get a bit of a more well-rounded view of what the Orcs can do. And these teams are both TV 1000 fresh teams, so just keep that in mind as well. It's the first game of the season. So good luck to both coaches. I'm not playing favourites, even though my student is obviously playing. Right, so, let's get onto the orc side first. The rats won the kick, and they've chosen to kick. Won the toss, and they've chosen to kick. So, important thing, first of all, when setting up, is to make sure that you have enough pieces in the back, just in case a rat does come back. So, I'm probably going to see all four black orcs on the line here. The linemen are going to be there in support, and the blitzers are going to be a little bit back, the thrower is going to be right back, just in case, ready to catch the ball, and also just in case the rats do get through. Though also we should be locking up the flanks as much as possible, and leaving little gaps, so the rats really have to break through if they want to get through. Good position of the linemen, I like it. One back, that's even better. And um, we're going to use the blitzers on the flanks as well. That's relatively normal setup. Quite happy with this so far. Though danger of leaving a gap here as soon as you move pieces. So we need to keep an eye on that. The lineman needs to come up in support. The back lineman needs to come up in support a little bit. Okay, so extra team reroll. For the rats. Okay, first turn then. Let's have a look. So, three rerolls, four rerolls. The rats have set up like they're obviously going to come down this flank. So, to be honest, these two pieces at the moment are kind of out of position. Would have been better off bringing them in one, uh, still holding this flank, but having them as potential threats over here as well. I'm happy with the setup in general, though against this particular setup, these guys are kind of out of position at the moment, and there's too much danger of pushing forward and being even further out of position. So, you can push one blitzer forward, but the other one has to come back, realistically, to deal with this threat. And not going too far forward with this lineman is kind of important, and this lineman mostly should be used for support. I want to see a flat line here, basically, but a flat line is slightly more favoring this flank. That's what I would set up to do. Blackhawks taking their blocks, trying to do some damage, and basically these blitzers basically staying where they are. Lineman in support, throw it, just securing the ball that's all the way back here. Um, Having said that though, there is a gap over here and we are on attack, so we can use it as well. What am I talking about? I'm talking like I'm on defense, sorry. So we're on offense, of course we are. In that case then, slightly different idea. Uh, the rats have overcommitted to this side instead, so you can put a lot of pressure on this side, so they have to come right round to get to you. And these guys basically are trying to punch their way into the middle. So forget what I said before, I'm talking as if we're defending when obviously we're not. So Tro has to go back and get the ball. The two linemen should be coming up to lock up this rat. There should be blitzers on this flank as well, and basically it's keeping the pressure in this area. So the rat team has to completely reposition in order to defend against you. Blackhawks are taking blocks against these pieces, and this Blackhawk should be moving last and moving into a position where they are threatening either this lineman if he's still standing, or threatening a gutter runner, if possible. Let's see what Blissful Fire actually did. He's securing the ball with a lineman. That's okay, having a piece in support is not so bad. And we're taking blocks before we're moving. Uh, 
I guess the idea is that the blitzers can get into a better position depending on where the rats are, but uh, I would have preferred to see at least these blitzers move before we started taking blocks. No, all the blocks were successful, so that's fine. And we're keeping all four black blocks together. That's good. Still, should be pressuring this side a little bit, just to split up the team. If you try and take the ball this way, you've got to get through too many rats, that's the problem. And it actually looks a little bit like Blissful Fire is setting up to get through the rats, mostly. Throw goes back for the ball. Pickup is good. And we don't need to move it, that's good. So now Joe Brandon should basically be putting a lot of his pieces into more of a flatline situation, with the gutter runner standing back a little bit. Uh, that's what I'd expect to see anyway. The long-term goal for the Orcs here, basically, with these two on the side, we actually want to get the ball up this way, but we want to make it look like we're threatening this side, which is what I think Blissful Fire is doing, and I think that's what Joe Brandon is actually responding to. So hopefully he's going to commit too many pieces to stopping these two guys, because they look like the scoring threat at the moment. Though, by having your two guys here and your Black Orcs ready to deal with the pitch, you can actually use these pieces, sorry, these pieces as a buff, as a bluff, and these pieces as the main attack. Though, it's quite hard to set that up when you're new especially, so you need to make it look like you're pushing up this way. And as you can see, he's put his entire team on this side, and he's actually put that gutter runner in, in severe danger, so I'm chasing down this gutter runner this turn for certain. That is, that is my blitz, that piece right there. And he's given up this flank completely, so the ball's got to go this way. Even now, we don't even need to bluff this way anymore. He's gone straight for this side, so the ball needs to go this direction. I'm not doing anything crazy like passing, I hope. Oh, we are doing something crazy like passing. If we're doing something crazy like passing, we need to move our pieces first. That's kind of essential. And we now want to basically push the team this way and keep the pressure on this side, so it's harder for them to get back. At the moment, you don't really have the numbers, so the Blitzer needs to come out this way, with these two supporting him. More this way. At the moment, he's central, which is a bit of a problem. It's a bit too safe from Blissful Fire here. The problem with putting the ball there is that the entire enemy is already on you, whereas if the ball is more this way, you're only dealing with half of the team. So, pushing out this way and using the blitzers where they were already would have been a slightly better play here. And also you've got this piece that's kind of stuck in your midst. He's kind of a spy at the moment, and he's not really where you want him to be, so... Blitz could have been there. As it is, Joe Brandon can actually reposition quite easily to just counteract and flatline against you, whereas if you put pieces that way and that way, he would have had to choose a side. And I am very fond of the passing play, though it, it should always come after you've done necessary movement, not before. Taking one day one dies against Black Orcs is kinda brave, but can't fault him for trying. And you've still got the number of oh, half die as well. Oh god. Okay, that's interesting. Right. We've still got the number advantage over this side, especially with that skull, so we need to really take advantage of this now, because there are two gutter runners that are well out of position. We've got gutter runner here and gutter runner here, and they're the key pieces. Now, you can knock out this piece pretty easily with this black orc, though it looks like you're going to use this one. So if you knock out this one with this black orc, this black orc stands right bang smack in the middle of the two gutter runners there. Blitzer number one locks up here. Blitzer with the ball moves into this kind of position, and Blitzer, Thrower, Lineman all come in support while these guys basically stand up and hold the line. Storm Vermin, Lineman, and Lineman can of course move, so we need this Blitzer to come around and lock up at least one of them. Also, stop gapping the Gutter Runner from running through this little gap here for free. Now, this Gutter Runner we don't even have to worry about because he's well out of position, so we can basically ignore him. No matter where he goes, he's not a bother. But, one, two, three. Four pieces should be supporting the ball over here with this piece going forward on a fence. And standing up Black Orc, taking the block here so we can stand on these two, Blitzer stands here. That's what should be happening this turn. Doesn't really make a difference which Black Orc we hit with so long as the other one goes into that gap. 
Nope, he's gone the wrong way. Okay. Unlucky we had to use a reroll so early. Didn't really want that to happen. The gutter runners, of course, are weaker pieces, but if you have too many on you, they can cause just as much problem. And yeah, this blitzer really needed to come around. And we're hitting the thrower for some reason. He's kind of pointless at the moment. Would we be better off taking a blitz against the storm vermin, just to get him down, and also to lock up this thrower, uh, this lineman? It looks like we're not moving the ball at all, which is fair, but again, you're giving Joe Brandon a chance to reposition, especially with the free piece that's over here. Okay, we're going for relative safety, buying a turn for the Black Hawk to come back. I see exactly what you're doing here. Okay. When, um, when any team splits up like this, though, you're best off forcing them to split up even more, as opposed to coming into the middle so they can regroup, which you've given Joe Brandon a chance to do here. He has a chance to reposition all of his players, so he's in a safer... He's taking another half die, though. Okay, he's moving, he's given the chance now to get back into a, to recollect his players and move into a position that slows you down. Whereas if you were over here, you'd only be dealing with these three pieces right now. The rest of the pieces would be stuck out over here still, and the ball would be free. I can kind of see a couple of turn movement where you are eventually going to go this way, but should have been last turn, really. Would have put a lot more pressure on Joe Brandon to react, as opposed to simply reposition into... Reconsolidate and reposition, as he has done. Now, yes, the Blackhawks and the Blitzer all have to be on the attack here. Putting as much pressure on these gutter runners and this lineman as possible. I like what I'm seeing now. This is much better. Okay. The ball needs to go over here. Hmm. No. In the middle, the ball is in a lot of trouble. Uh, long term. Short term, not at all. But long term, the rats can kind of surround you and they can cause you a lot of problems. But I think you're mostly focused on damage at the moment, which is fine. And it's something that's quite common for a coach who is quite new to orcs. But positioning is really important. And at the moment, you're kind of giving him a chance to box you in. Whereas if you were out here, he wouldn't be able to. He wouldn't have had three turns to set it up, basically. But never mind. We're still doing fine. And again, we're taking half dies. Well, the fact he's taking a lot of risk, actually, uh, maybe being in the middle is not such a bad idea. Uh, in that regard, playing the player, I don't mind this middling play. Though he is forcing himself... He, he is forcing you to come forward. And unfortunately, you're biting. Whereas, you should be coming sideways. So if you base these two pieces with... Well, if you base this piece with two of your own, basically, and these guys all base over here, then you've got a nice big gap here, and absolutely nothing he can do to get there, realistically. We're pushing the other way instead, though. I see. Again, we're hitting the thrower when we don't really need to. Do the important blocks first. That is indeed the important block. And we should be following this turn. Looks like we are good. Right, okay, let's just pause it here for a second. So what's going to happen now? Uh, if I was Skaven, what would happen now is everything would fall back one spot and the orcs would not be able to score because they've only got three turns. So. By putting yourself in this position, basically, you've set it up so the Skaven can just stand here and stall you until the end of their drive. Um, knowing Joe Brandon, though, he is actually going to go for the ball. So in, in that regard, what you're doing is kind of working, but it's specific to the coach. Overall, though, really, 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 we need to take a flank as opposed to going through the middle. Going through the middle, it's too much of a stall. And this is the thing that a lot of all coaches get wrong when they're starting off. Chaos coaches as well, for that matter. They try and push through the middle when there's space on the side. And 
Uh, I'm banging this home a bit too hard, I know, I apologize for that, but um, basically you, you've put yourself into a position where you're going to be stopgapped. There's going to be rats everywhere now, and you can maybe punch a hole, but chances are you're going to be held at the end of the line, or you're going to have to take risk on turn 8, which is something that I've taught you how to do, I know, but, uh, you know, it's only if you need to, not because you want to, necessarily. So what should be happening here as orcs now, when Joe Brandon does make this flat line, is you need to choose which flank you're going to, and you need to hit it hard with everything you've got, because if he falls back, you're going to have a lot of free pieces, and you can do something with those free pieces. If he keeps lining up like he is, and you keep lining up like you are, you're going to be stuck. And I can see this is getting a bit laggy. I don't know why. Let's have a look. Probably because that's open. Shut that. Hopefully at least it hasn't affected my voice. And uh, this is really laggy. I'm having computer problems recently, I don't know why. So, I apologize for the delay in the image here. Hopefully it will pick up again in a second. Let's try closing back to... That helps, there we go. Okay, so we're back. Now, as you can see, Joe Brandon is actually still overcommitted to this side. If you can get rid of the Storm Vermin, which shouldn't be too hard, and get rid of this rat, which also shouldn't be too hard, again a half die. What's he doing? Oh well. Um, if you can get rid of the Storm Vermin, and you can get rid of this line rat, you can move pieces out here. The ball can come to here safely, and next turn you can score. If you don't go out this way, you're not scoring this drive. I can guarantee it. Not safely, anyway. And you're better off basing a few pieces and not taking blocks, so linemen there would have been a better play. That's good. That's a good start. We're hitting this piece, I hope. Yes, we are. Unfortunately, we need to hit him again now. That maybe could have been the Blitz, just so you can get the Black Hawk out. No, the Blitz has to be this Blitzer now. No. Okay, that's not far enough. You really need the ball to come out this turn. I know that you lack a bit of safety, but you need to move the team with you, basically. And to do that, the best way to do it is to Blitz with this Blitzer, or to Blitz with the original Black Hawk. As it is, again, you're giving Joe Brandon a chance to come back over. He's not, to be fair, which is helping you, but that's what he definitely should be doing, and that's what an experienced coach would be doing. And he has actually come over and stopped you now. He's probably going to two-line screen here. It looks like he is going to do that exactly, because you can't get out here quickly enough and safely enough. Oh, 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 that's really unlucky. Nothing we can do about that, though. Want to replace him as soon as possible, of course. Right, do we have any kind of saving grace here now? Yes, but it's not pretty. You can send a Black Orc up, you've got two turns, you can send a Black Orc up against these two, and send a Black Orc up against these two. Ignore these two completely, they're out of position. Ignore this one completely, he's out of position. We've only got two turns, he's only got two turns, so we need to force this way to use as many pieces as possible. And when we've got these two down, you can blitz with your blitzer, knock out this piece, and move into a... well not move, stay where you are. The other Blitzer can come around and cause some problems. You can dodge as well if you want to, because you have rerolls. So you can Blitz and dodge back out. But most importantly, one, two, three, four, five, potentially six pieces need to be moving in this direction and need to be moving up. If you don't do that, no chance. Okay, good with the Blitzer. Good with the Thrower. Yeah, fine with the Black Hawk, okay. I'll take the Blitz there, as long as you follow. Okay, really should have followed. 
and this guy needs to come in here. Mm -mm. This is the main problem with caging. When you're caging, you're risking way too many pieces to holding a ball. You're much better off screening and stopping pieces from doing anything. You also know this piece is probably going down, and the furthest he can move freely is one, two, three, four. So he needs to GFI even to get to you, and you have peace in the way. So you don't even need to worry too much about that piece. So this black orc is in a completely useless place at the moment. He would have been much better off here, and this blitzer as well would have been much better off here, for the record. As it is, they can engulf you and stop you from scoring, unfortunately. And I'm sure that's what's happened here. Yeah. It's pretty hard to get through a double line of rats, especially if they manage to set it up on three lines, which it looks like they're going to attempt to do. Yeah. Okay, so I see one play and one play only. This piece is scoring. This piece needs to knock him out. Uh, Fro needs to come in support. Black Hawk needs to come up here in case it goes wrong. Two Black Hawks need to come up here in case it goes wrong as well. Blitzer here, along with Froa, needs to knock down Storm Vermin. Hand off to Blitzer here. Blitzer runs it in with two GFI. Score. It looks like you've seen the same thing, so good. Ah, uh, follow puts you in the way, though. Oh, no. Okay, injury is good. Damn you, cell phone. We are going to try something similar. Interesting. We've got to go through tackle zones to make it work now. And yeah, we got a reroll at least, but we've already used it. <clears throat> so to be positive at the end of this drive, I like the way you defended the ball. The rats never had a chance at it. That, that was very good. The defensive part of the game was fine, completely fine, but... Um, yeah, needed to be more aware of the space you have. So before your turn, before you do anything, have a look to see where the numbers are. This is my key advice to any new player now. Not just Blissful, but any player who's playing the game, as any race. When you're starting your half, have a look at where the space is. So for example, right now, imagine that we had two more turns, for example, okay? Or one more turn even, we don't need two. So you can see, as the Orcs, that the Skaven are overcommitted on this side. So with all these players that are free here, the Orcs are definitely going this way. Without a doubt. This one's not really such a big deal, because he's locked up, and you can even put him down if you want to. If you can put him down, he's not in the fight at all, because he can only move four spaces from the ground, and he needs to get through this guy first. So the people who are kind of here on the edge, don't even worry about them too much. They, they are a threat, but they're a small threat. The ones that are a threat are the ones that can move, so you need to give two pieces to lock up as many of these as you can. The rest of the team is moving this way and protecting the ball. And this is what you always have to do when you're looking at the pitch. If there's more players on this side, push this side. If there's more opposition players on this side, push this side. If they're in the middle, then push out both flanks. And try and surround the middle as much as possible. That's basic attacking strategy. And if we have a look at Joe Brandon for a second, because it is his last turn. He can't score, of course, but same idea, okay? So we'll have a look at what the Orcs look like. The Orc defense looks a lot better, to be fair, to, than the Rats defense. It's pretty difficult to find gaps, though the weak point in the orc team is definitely here. And keeping in mind that these guys can't move very quickly, rats should be going in this direction with as many rats as possible, knocking down this piece and locking up this one. If we had two more turns, for example, then the ball is running through this gap here, taking this area, and we're screening off like this, so nothing can come through easily. And that's basically how we attack in general.
As it is, though, I imagine that Joe Brandon is just going to go for a Vanity Pass at the end, which makes perfect sense. May as well. There we go. Now we're going to run the gutter run for fun. Okay, we're going to support and take out the lineman. You've both done pretty well with rerolls, to be fair, though. You haven't rerolled anything overly unnecessary, so I give you both credit there. Though Joe Brandon obviously had quite a lot of rerolls. Though to Blissful Fire specifically, I think he did quite well with reroll management. He didn't really need to reroll anything, to be fair, but still. You didn't reroll things that you didn't have to, so relatively happy. Alright, let's see how you do on defense then. Obviously we're a black book down to a rat down, so we are 10 on 10, which mostly helps Skaven. There wasn't a bench, was that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9, 10. Yeah, there wasn't a bench on either team. So being one man down is mostly help for Skaven uh, when you're even numbers. But it is the... and it is the Skaven drive, so that's even worse. I quite like this two-line setup you've done here. It's very good. And the black book's on the line. Yeah, against Skaven I'd do the same thing, probably. A lot of people would argue that it's unnecessarily dangerous, but it's not. It means that the Skaven have to use a lot of pieces to get them down if they want to. <coughs> but uh, Skaven have done quite well, actually, by setting up outside, so Blackhawks could have been split out a bit more. That would have been a little bit better. Otherwise, pretty happy with that, that lineup. Nice weather again. It's the games of nice weather in the Tudor League this week. Both coaches have a little bit of overzealous blocking syndrome, where they want to block before they move things they need to move. But that comes with being a new coach. Right, so that movement has told me that Joe Brandon is going to attack this flank, <coughs> which is a sensible play as Skaven because they can outmaneuver you, so better off picking one side as opposed to trying to fight both at once. And knowing Joe Brandon a little bit, we're going to try and get the ball into this kind of area right now. Though I've only played one game with him, so he may surprise me. And we have this extra piece as a flank. The sensible thing would be to stay back with the ball, which he's done. Fair enough. <clears throat> and we also dodged off. Okay. So, orcs. What can we see? Well, there's obviously an attack here, though it may be a half bluff because we've got pieces here and a piece here that can receive as well, so don't ignore them completely. The danger here is chasing down these three pieces, whereas realistically we want to kind of flatline as much as possible and preferably blitz this piece, just so we can get it down. The thrower basically needs to come back in support over here. This lineman also needs to come back in support over here, and we can ignore the blitz maybe actually. And we can blitz maybe one of these guys instead. And the Blackhawks need to kind of spread out a bit to make the line a little bit denser. So they've got to come through at least one Black Hawk. If you have these guys at the back a bit in support, then the two gap, two gap, two gap would be a pretty good defense for the Black Hawks here. Uh, most importantly though, don't put everything forward. If you put everything forward, you're going to be in trouble. And the biggest threat is actually this piece here. So we need to blitz this piece realistically when I think about it, so ignore this piece completely in terms of attacking him. We want to get this piece down so we can at least lock up this one, and we need to also lock up this one. So these two are the biggest threats right now, because they can score right this second. Let's see what we do. Lineman's coming back, that's good. Thrower should be coming back as well. Blitz is going forward, that's fine. Don't put another one there though, no need. Oh dear. The problem with that is that the gutter runner can get round. I know I originally said Blitz, but uh, I very quickly changed my mind, and yeah, this lineman needed to come back this way a little bit, actually. Okay, if we can get a piece on 
the gutter runner? I agree with this play, though following you've made it difficult. There we go. Okay, so we're blocking this piece now. Yeah, fine. Uh, a little bit messy and a little bit too big a gap here, but overall not so bad. This one needs to come back, I'd say, here, realistically, just so you can make a pretty decent screen here. But he's not bad where he is, it's just that the gap is a little bit too big here, so if they do get through, you don't really have an answer. Interesting placement of the gutter runner out on the outside. I can see a situation here where we have a handoff and a pass both happening. And yeah, he, he has seen the gap here, and he's going to take advantage of it. If you had the black hawk here, you'd be able to deal with this gutter runner, as opposed to lined up with this lineman. Thankfully the push has saved you a bit, you've actually put enough pressure on by staying standing. <coughs> There's quite a lot of risk on the rat side at the moment. Okay. It gets trickier now because of the gap you've left, but it's not impossible. If we bring back Lineman, bring back Black Orc to lock up these two, and we want at least one of these locked up with one piece here, one piece here. What I would actually do in this situation is I'd put a Lineman here, Black Orc here. Uh, this guy doesn't need to stand up until the end. This guy does need to stand up so we can get a two die on the Storm Vermin. So, first play, Donk, Donk. Second play, stand up, block, block, and move this piece in support as well. And as final play, maybe knock this piece down first so we can do the same to this piece. So in fact, before we do any of the blocks, move this piece as well here. So one lineman here, one lineman here. Free black orc here. Blitzer knocks this guy down. Other blitzer comes in a screen. And then the ball has to go into this area. There's no choice. If you don't knock up these two, then the ball is going to come further down than you want it to, and there's going to be an immediate score threat. And the reason why we don't want to stand this piece up straight away, or this piece, one or the other, is so we can have one of them move back in and help with the defense, or backup defense if necessary. And the reason they say in front is because then they have to go backwards to come forwards. If you go behind them, you're still locking them up, that's good, and you're stopping the pass, which I guess is the main point you have. However, they can get out of that really easily and in the direction they want to go. So this pizza needs to come back now, as we change the thing that we're doing. Okay, that's fine, he can come out as well then. So Blitzer, one, two, uh, three, that's enough. No, need to go in front. And, oh dear. Hmm. That's good. Now we got rid of the sound and the cell phone. That's a good start. Though, just to show you here, we need a 2 plus out here, a 2 plus out here. This guy is going to one die block. Joe Brandon has shown he's going to be doing that all game, so this guy is going to be locked up by the Storm Vermin, assuming that doesn't go wrong. I don't think this guy's even going to bother standing up, though if he does, he's probably dodging out, so we don't need to worry about him. And this guy can also get out of the way relatively easily. And we can actually move the ball this turn quite safely around this side, if we can get enough pieces around here as Skaven. So, it's not bad yet, but the kind of free turn goal for Skaven, which is to get the ball here probably, we've kind of given them an extra chance by pushing forward as opposed to falling back a bit in this situation. When you're defending against Skaven, it's usually better off falling back as opposed to pushing forward. It's a mistake that I've made as well when playing Skaven, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that I'm immune to it, I'm not, but it's what we need to be thinking about when we're playing against Skaven as much as possible. But Joe Brandon is a really risky player. He's actually forcing himself into a difficult position by giving that piece the ball. I 
Ah, okay, he's gone that way. Okay, forget it. Never mind. Uh, I completely missed that gap, but that's fine. So, he's not risky at all. He's actually done perfectly there. Uh, I was thinking for some reason he had to go through this way, but he didn't. Not enough coffee. That's my excuse. Right. The only piece that can get to the ball at the moment is the Blitzer. So, that's the piece that's doing it. I would put one piece here. I would put one piece here, and then Blitzer comes round and tries to knock the ball here. Black Hawk needs to come back. And, unfortunately, we're in a bit of trouble with these guys, because... These three are stuck here no matter what, and these two are stuck here no matter what. So we don't really have the numbers to deal with this threat at the moment. But that's the only thing I'd really do. So this guy comes here, this guy here, Blitzer, Blitz. Hopefully the ball lands here somewhere, and it's difficult for Joe Brandon to deal with it. Then we need to lock up this piece if possible as well. I guess this Black Hawk can do it, and this Black Hawk can stand up. Or this Black Hawk can stand up, hit the Storm Vermin, and this Black Hawk can come through. And kind of be in the way over here. I don't know, let's see what Blissful Fire does here. Okay, we're standing in the way at the moment. Is this the guy we want to hit? Yeah, I think we still can actually. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we need to GFI though. Good reroll, like it. And good. Mm. Ball should have gone this way. I've always good. That's a good scatter though. That's really good actually. Okay, this piece needs to come down to support Alan. If we're gonna play that way. This guy needs to come right down. Come on, Blissful, you can do it. You can do it. Yeah you can. Good man. Oh, that's perfect. I like it. Right. That's beautiful. That's a gutter run and murder zone right there. And we've also got two pieces on the line out of the way. I like this a lot. Fair play. Uh, that's unlucky. For Joe Brandon, I mean. That's really good for us orcs. He needs to dodge a lot, and thankfully he fails one. Got a bit lucky there, on the orc side, but still, overall I liked what you did. I actually like Joe Brendan's attempt to clean it up as well. Now, now it gets really, really tricky. And this black orc is free, he needs to come back. He needs to come back. We can keep this blitzer forward as a scoring threat. The rest of the guys need to come in support of the ball right now. Uh, we can actually put the thrower here and surf off, but that's the last thing we do. We don't need to care about this lineman here, we can ignore him completely, let him get back up, no problem. This Black Hawk needs to be in a more useful situation, like going towards the thrower. So this Black Hawk needs to come back, lineman needs to come and stand directly on the ball, one blitzer needs to come in, needs to lock up this piece, the other one needs to either come in support or be the carrier. Better off being the person who actually picks up. We want to block this piece, but after the ball has been supported, because you'll get a free two die block, so realistically, Blitzer here should be coming, let's say, here. Lineman here should be here. And this Blitzer can actually stay where he is until he goes for the pickup. And then we can actually move the ball a little bit. And Blackhawk needs to come back. And Thrower needs to come back, realistically. So Blackhawk can actually be the support and Thrower can come back. Go to the Blackhawk. Okay. Right, there's no one to pick up now, though. But we're gonna use this piece, I see. That's fine, we didn't need him to go down. So we're not picking up this turn. But this blitzer wants to end somewhere over here so the ball is impossible to pick up for the rats. Oh, GFI. Well, reroll, it's necessary now. Okay, don't follow. Black Hawk locks up Thrower. Oh, Thrower comes back. Perfect. So he's picking up next to him. That's good news. Uh, we're taking a one die. Not sure about that, but okay. 
not a big deal, to be honest, at this point, because these pieces are kind of irrelevant for this turn. <coughs> Though next turn they're going to be a bit of a fret now. Actually, when I think about it, I think this feedback is maybe more useful than actually saying messages on turn blah blah blah, you did this, etc, uh, etc. Et so maybe maybe this is better as a way to communicate with the student. And Joe Bannon pushing onto the ball is good news for us, actually, as orcs. Especially that scatter, because that scatter is worse for him than it was before. We can't realistically get to that. He'll try, though. And he'll fail. Right. Now we need to look at how we're going to score, because that's the, that's it now. This ball is ours. We have just won the ball with that failed dodge. That's exactly what happened here. The thrower is free, which is really good news. So where are we going with the ball? I would actually use this blitzer now, because he's on his own. And we can move the blitzer. How many can move? He can move six, we can move three. One, two, three. Blackhawk can stay with that piece locked up. We can use Black Hawk here to lock up Gutter Runner. And Thrower picks up the ball, maybe runs it out this way at first. Though the end goal is going to be this guy probably. Or this guy of course. Okay, so let's have a look at this in turn by turn then. So I'm looking three turns ahead basically at the moment. I'm looking at how the ball is going to end up over here. It's going to take three turns realistically. This turn the goal is use thrower to pick up ball and keep him safe with one, two, three pieces. Sounds good to me. Black Hawk causes problems here. I'd say the lineman causes problems here. Lineman stays exactly where he is, does not take a block. And these guys basically go over here, or here in the area basically, and thrower comes into this gap. Black Hawk can take this block relatively safely. And we can send Black Hawk and Blitzer over this way instead, ignoring this guy completely when we think about it. So Black Hawk here can come back in support as well, and Blitzer needs to move forward. The only pieces that are scoring are this Blitzer or this Blitzer. So we need to get them out somewhere, somehow. At the moment, this Blitzer is doing a good job of locking up this rat. So he's the best option, because we have three turns. But let's see what Blissful Fire does. I like it. I like it less, but it will do. I like it now. Okay, we're actually going to block the Storm Vermin. That's not so bad. We need to deal with the thrower, though. That's the problem. Uh, Lineman could have done with standing on the, on the Gutter Runner, actually. You're better off standing on pieces at the moment, so they have to dodge out as well as dodge in. They're not likely to take blocks against things that are bigger than them. That is beautiful though, that's exactly what we want to see. In fact, that stun would tell me, great, we're going 1-0. Unless something goes wrong with the dice. Should have followed, really. We're giving them a free movement. And Joe Brandon is known to take half dies and one dies, so he's going to hit the ball. We got lucky there. Alright. This score is on still, though. Now even better. Right, that would be that would be Christmas for me if I saw that happen. So, Blitzer locks up here. Lineman locks up here. Black Hawk, Black Hawk. Thrower comes running out here. He can pass from this place on a pretty safe pass with a reroll. And Blitzer number two hands off. Blitzer goes over here, and we're scoring. That's all we need to do. Okay. 
That's fine. Don't need to be taking blocks at all, though. Oh, no, 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 no. No blocks here. Uh huh. Okay, there goes the reroll. Passes harder now. Well, we got an injury out of it. Okay. Though, we need the reroll for the pass, realistically. And is that what's happening here? I'm sure it is. Surely. Oh no! Okay. Well. In this case, then, we need to put the Blitzer into a more dangerous scoring position out of the way, so this Blitz needs to move over here a bit. Just to be safer. At the moment, he's in too much threat of being locked up. And we only have two turns, which isn't really enough for Orcs. Oh, he's coming back. Okay, he's going that side. That's a bit better. There's less pieces to deal with, but still. Yeah, I think that's going to be the difference between 1-0 nil and 0-0, nil -nil, though, to be honest. That doesn't really change much in the situation we're in now, to be honest, so... Fair enough. Uh, what can we do here, though? It gets really difficult now. This is the only piece that can score. So... One, two, three, four, GFI, GFI, no. One, two, three, four... Okay, these guys need to come into this area. Two, three, four, five, six, GFI. Okay, Blitzer comes up here. Blitz. And run up. And Bull Carrier goes up with him. Then we can score in two turns still. Still possible. Now it's not. Well, it's not impossible, but it's a lot harder. Yeah, the, the ball simply isn't moving far enough at the moment. The ball needs to be here. This turn. Not here, that's too far, but here, this turn. At the very least. And the blitzer needs to be in a scoring position. We're, we're using the right piece, that's a good start. But push isn't really good enough. And we should be going this way, then. Yep. Storm Vermin can still get you though, so... Unfortunately, that's not enough. I like the attempt though. I think you've got the right idea almost all the time. I'm quite impressed with what you've done overall. Though, just basically figuring out how to do it better is the next step. And so far, I really like what you've done in essence. And I love how mad your Brandon is. I really like it. Wow. Okay. Well, the Blitzer is probably the ball carrier here, because he can move further. Too many blocks that we don't need to take, though. That's one thing I would definitely say. I don't know if you've just given up on scoring now, but you still can score, so you should still be trying. Uh-huh. Oh well. No, overall, not bad. Not bad, overall. But a little bit of room for improvement, that's all, basically. Just be more aware of what you can see in front of you at all times. It's kind of the key to the game, actually. Figuring out where the space is and best using it. it takes a bit of practice, but it's something you've got to always be looking at. Where are the opposition pieces? Where are they weakest? Okay, let's go there, basically. The problem with the slow advance is that you run out of time as orcs, so you need to always be moving... You need to always be moving at least two or three squares forward with the ball, realistically, if you want to score within, say, six turns. 
So when it gets to turn four, turn five, you want to make sure that you are at the very least on the border of the opposition half. If you're not, you're going to really struggle to score. And if you're not, you need to find a way that you can be on the opposition half as quickly as possible. In terms of when I'm here as well, let's quickly have a look at the development of the two teams. Dead Black Hawk is hard. We've only taken 30, so we can't even buy the Apothecary yet. That's a, he must have rolled a 2, I guess. Yeah, rolled a 2 unless he had 10 left over. Or he rolled a 1 and he already had money, one or the other. So we're not going to worry about the Dead Black Hawk. We're just going to have to use the Lineman as a Black Hawk instead. That's not such a big deal. And we've got a Blitzer who's about to level up, so we want to make sure that happens next game. And if we can get one more injury with this Black Hawk, that would be good too. If we can get a little bit more SPP on the thrower, and we don't care about the lineman. So if we can get a little bit of SPP on the thrower as well, that would be great. And who's our next opponent? Let's have a look. Our next opponent is... Tutor League Dark Elves. Oh dear. D-Man is pretty immense, to be honest. Well, most important thing with the Dark Elves, then... If you can get rid of the Witch Elf, that will really help you, of course. She's the weakest armor value in the team, so keep an eye on trying to get rid of her. The Blitzers are obviously going to cause you problems, and hopefully he still won't have an Apothecary, so injuries are going to scare him a little bit. The problem with Dark Elves is that anything that can pick up, so make sure you always have something in defense playing against them. I'll give you a little bit extra rundown when... Well, when the week rolls over, though, so we'll talk about that personally. Anyway, Blissful... Good attempt. I saw some very positive things, but uh, I still see some things that we need to work on. So if you have any questions, then of course DM me. And anybody else who wants to comment below, by all means do. Uh, they were two relatively new players playing, so you can talk about Orcs or Skaven in the comments below. That would be really helpful for anybody who's new watching this game. Thank you for watching. That's all for now. Bye-bye.